together that we want to present the king. We want to glorify the king. We want to talk about the king. We want to learn to know the king. We want him to be presented through intercession and through worship and through all of the ways that the word can bring life all around the world. I'm Laura Allison with Celebration Ministries and we are in the middle of a series on Holy Spirit. This is kind of the season of Holy Spirit, and so we want to talk about Him. We want to get to know Him better, but most of all, we want to see Holy Spirit released throughout the nations so that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? So who is Holy Spirit? We want to talk today about the Holy Spirit who is the gifter. The Holy Spirit is a gifter. Because of who He is, He's packed with gifts. Now, you may know someone that's very, very talented, and it just seems like they can do anything and everything, and and it just seems like they're a treasure chest, and, and there's all kinds of jewels and gifts in there. Well, that's what Holy Spirit is like. Holy Spirit is a person, and you'll if you'll look through these last couple of of messages. This is the third message on the Holy Spirit, the reign of King Jesus and King Holy Spirit. But He is the one who gives life. He is the one who brings power. He is the one who gives us revelation, who opens our eyes to the truth. He's the spirit of truth, but He's also the gifter. So if you would turn with me to 1 Corinthians 12. I know you know all of this. I know you've read this many times and certainly in many translations. I love the Amplified because the Amplified Bible goes into um, the original languages and not adds words like the Living Bible does, but, but simply amplifies what is there that can't be said in one uh, English word or one Spanish word. So. So anyway, I'm going to let you just read through that. Some of this is going to be thrown up on the screen. But I want to talk about these are manifestations or they are beaming outward rays of light of Holy Spirit. So if Holy Spirit is present, all of these things operate. Holy Spirit is the operator and producer of the kingdom. So all of these things operate operate where he is. Now, there's a scripture where it it describes Jesus and it says he is the outraying of the divine. He is the radiance or the outraying of the divine. In other words, Jesus always said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Well, Holy Spirit, Jesus said, is another like him. So Holy Spirit also outrays with these gifts. And the thing is, he doesn't just sit there by himself with the rays coming out. He literally puts those rays, puts those parts of his nature into the believers. So when we, in the book of Acts, it says that they received the Holy Spirit. Of course, we know the day of Pentecost came and they received the Holy Spirit. But then the disciples went out and they would always say, Have you received the Holy Spirit? So when they laid their hands, the people would begin to speak in tongues, an outraying of the Holy Spirit, a manifestation, an outward manifestation of who Holy Spirit is on the inside. So see what the Scripture says about this. Now, about spiritual gifts and those in the... In the uh, Original language, it means the special endowments of supernatural energy. Now, isn't that interesting? We think of a gift as somebody gives me a gift. Oh, good, here's a gift. And, and it's something outside of us. But 
This says that this spiritual gift, this is a special endowment of supernatural energy because it's Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit is the power of God. Holy Spirit is the energy of God. So the spiritual gifts are each one a part of that energy. So then go down to verse 4. It says, now there are distinctive varieties and distributions of these endowments. Now it says extraordinary powers distinguishing certain Christians due to the power of divine grace operating in their soul or their spirit by the Holy Spirit. They vary, but the Spirit is the same. So that means that in us, there's the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit may beam out a certain energy, a certain power, a certain divine grace, and the Scripture says here, extraordinary power. Now, how many times have you wanted extraordinary power? When you feel the weakest, we say, God, I need power. Well, we need power from on high, and His name is Holy Spirit. Jesus said, stay here in the upper room, and you will receive, He didn't say Holy Spirit, He said power. He said, you'll, see, you'll stay here, and you'll receive power from on high. So here we have, right at our fingertips inside of us, if we receive Him, we have extraordinary power operating by the Holy Spirit. Then we go down to verse 6. There are varieties of operation working to accomplish things, but it's the same God who inspires and energizes. See, there it is again. This is not a mind gift. This is not a psychic gift. This is not a sit there and think it up. This is a power that is inspired and energized by God. Verse 7, to each is given this manifestation, this evidence, this spiritual illumination for the good or the purpose of all. So see, there's always a purpose behind it. Now I and you I'm sure have as well. We've seen ministers who use the word of knowledge. Um, I can tell you what street you live on. I can tell you. And it wows everybody. And it, and it brings it down to the level of a psychic gift or down to the level of a, of a mind game. But it's not a mind game. And it's not about the carnal mind at all. It is a supernatural energy, a, 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 a spiritual illumination, and it has a purpose. There's always a purpose. So when the Lord quickens to you, sometimes it, it could be just a tiny little leading, just a, just a kind of a, a little green light on the inside, you know, and, and, and it's not loud, and it's not a, it's not a word in your, mar, in your brain. You just have that little leading. If you'll allow that leading to come out of you, that's oftentimes the Holy Spirit who wants to minister to someone else or to bring a gift out that someone greatly needs for the edification of all, for the building up of all. God is a builder. He's a restorer. He's the restorer of paths to dwell in. He's one who, he is not one who wants to correct. He is one who wants to restore. Now, he does judge, but he's a righteous judge. So Holy Spirit in us begins to speak. So verse 8, so to one is given through the Holy Spirit the power to speak a message of wisdom. A message of wisdom is this is, this is the wisdom of what you need to do. Read the, read the Proverbs about wisdom. Powerful, powerful. Wisdom is a powerful force. And to another the power to express a word of knowledge and understanding according to the same Holy Spirit. Now, I'll give you an example of that. I was... I was in a, <clears throat> a service in another state somewhere, <clears throat> and, and I was prophesying in this altar call. And this young woman comes up, and the Lord said several things to her, and right at the end, <clears throat> he said, the Lord said, and you're the t tail and not the head. You're the head and not the tail, I'm sorry. He said, you're the head and not the tail. And so... In my brain, I'm thinking, oh, great, you know, that's a really profound thought. Well, 
I never touched her. She fell out under the power of God. So the next morning, she comes to me <clears throat> before the service, and she says, that was the most accurate prophecy I've ever had. And I said, why? What do you mean? And she said, well, I'm the 12th of 12 children. And she said, there's a joke in our family that I'm the tail that wags the head. And she said, but your word showed me that I have worth in my own heart. And the word was, you're the head and not the tail through Christ, you know, of course. So that is a word of knowledge that is extremely sharp. Holy Spirit is sharp. I mean, we don't play horseshoes here. Sometimes we make it, sometimes we don't. When we don't hit it right, it's because our carnal mind has gotten in and tried to mix it up and make it make sense. Now, if I had let my brain do that, I would have probably changed that wording some. But I said, well, I let Holy Spirit say the words. <clears throat> and what it did was it changed her life. So that's a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. Then verse 9, there's another facet of Holy Spirit's outraying. It says wonder-working faith. So he gives a gift Holy Spirit, gift of faith. Now, the Bible tells us that we all have a measure of faith, and so we need to use our faith. We need to walk by faith. We're not to walk by sight. We're to walk by faith. We're to walk after the Spirit. But then Holy Spirit comes along. It's kind of like a jump start or a jumper cable on a dead battery. <laughs> Holy Spirit then comes with the gift of faith. And suddenly, you see... Uh, someone that, that's in a wheelchair and needs to be healed and if Holy Spirit is releasing you to pray for this person and has the desire and the purpose of healing that person suddenly you'll have that burst of the gift of wonder working faith and of course the next one is extraordinary powers of healing it's, it's remarkable now, we don't have to lay hands on people for people to be healed. We know that. If we are releasing Holy Spirit, someone in the congregation can be healed just because Holy Spirit has been invited to be free. We need to say, welcome Holy Spirit and do your wonders. We need a wonder-working God in this hour. We need a God who does miracles and signs and wonders. I'm excited about what God is able to do. He makes us more than conquerors. Listen, in this hour of global challenge on a level that none of us have ever seen in our lifetime, we serve a God of wonder-working power. He has powers of heavenly hosts at His disposal. He's the captain of the heavenly hosts. We can loose out Holy Spirit on behalf of someone on the other side of the world and they can get saved in the middle of their living room. They can get healed in the middle of the field behind their house just because we prayed and we released Holy Spirit and we let the faith of the Holy Spirit transcend this paltry space and time dimension. There's no time dimension. There's no space dimension in the kingdom of heaven. So someone in Uzbekistan or Azerbaijan, they're, they're, they're as close as we are right here. We can pray for them and instantly they receive what the Lord by the Holy Spirit is sending to them. It's an exciting thing to work with Holy Spirit. Verse 10 to, to the working of miracles. We just said that. To prophetic insight. Now this one, listen, this one, we need to talk about this. So, <clears throat> gift of prophecy. Prophets. We're going to do a series on that, I hope, sometime, because there's so much misuse, there's abuse, there's misunderstanding. But if you read this in the Amplified Bible, <clears throat> he, doesn't, he, he calls it prophetic insight. Now listen, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose. Now, the Holy Spirit manifestation, the Holy Spirit energy, the Holy Spirit power that is called the gift of prophecy 
literally refers to the gift of interpreting divine will and purpose. So as a prophet, I'm a prophet, a prophetic ministry. As a prophet, I release Holy Spirit and he speaks. But when he speaks, he speaks according to the divine will of the Godhead, the divine will of the Father. He's speaking to build up the kingdom in that person or in that city or in that region or in that nation. Whatever the Holy Spirit wants to prophesy about, it has, it has the purpose and the will of the Father rolled into it. It is literally the Word of God spoken through an individual human pipe. <laughs> We're human, so we make mistakes. We let our mind get involved. We, you know, you, you always test the prophets. You always test what comes out of a human vessel because there is error. Every prophet that ever walked on the face of the earth has made mistakes. And so, you know, we can make mistakes. But our heart is not, I want to make a name for myself by prophesying somebody and what they're going to do tomorrow and what, they, what car should they buy and what house should they live in. And Let's get a grip on this. Let's focus on Holy Spirit and let's focus on the purpose of God. Amen? Because that's what Holy Spirit does. Holy Spirit is the revelator. Holy Spirit is the illuminator. Holy Spirit is the truth. So when Holy Spirit releases prophecy, it's going to fit into those categories because that's who He is. Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. So, to distinguish the ability, this is the next one, to distinguish and discern between the utterances of true spirits and false ones. Now that's a whole lot different than just discernment of spirits. <clears throat> what I've always said before I even discovered what the original languages said, what I've always said is discernment of spirits is both good. You discern the good and the evil. So you discern what is the truth. You discern what God is doing and what God is saying. You may, you may discern um, when someone is speaking and, and they give a vision from heaven, you discern by the Holy Spirit. And, and if it was God that gave it to them, then Holy Spirit in you will discern that it is the truth, even though it may not make sense to your carnal mind, but also discernment of false spirits, discernment of evil spirits. A lot of times this, this verse 10, discernment of spirits, is cavalierly, I would say, used to talk about evil and the devil and demons and that's the spirit of this and that and the other. Well, if that divine grace is operating in us by the Holy Spirit, there will be that, but there will also be the discernment of the truth and the discernment of the good. And, it, and you've heard the phrase, bear witness, your, your heart the Spirit in you will bear witness with something that's spoken. So when, it, when anyone prophesies over you, all of us have had prophecies that were not the Lord. So when, when you have that, that has no power over you. You have authority by the Holy Spirit and by the blood of Christ. You have authority over yourself. And so you just wash yourself off and go away. I mean, you know, just let it go away. Don't think about it anymore. Don't worry about it. You know, you don't have to pray for that it's like a curse. No, 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 no. We don't have to be afraid. There is no fear in the kingdom. God hadn't given us a spirit of fear. There's no fear in the kingdom. So right now during a pandemic kind of situation that happens to be going on during this filming time, um, that's fueled by fear. Everywhere you, it's, it's fear, paranoia. That is not God. That is a dark spirit trying to bring trying to bring down people that are faith people. Let me tell you, faith is life. Fear is death. Faith is life. Fear is death. So we don't focus on these evil things. We focus on the Lord. We focus on the light. 
We, we, we speak the words of truth and we command in our time of proclamation and intercession, we command truth to be revealed, truth to be seen, truth to be spoken. Holy Spirit to cause truth to be spoken even when the intent of the person may have been opposite of that because he's big and because he's powerful and because he gives us the power to speak on his behalf. So he gives, in verse 11 it says, he gives everyone individually as he chooses. So one day I may be using that prophetic uh, gift. I may be using the gift of miracles. The next day I may be using a different one or whatever as he gives the gift comes as he needs it. It's not about us. These gifts are not about us. They're about Holy Spirit ministering and bringing enlightenment and health and life and healing to the people. So the focus is not on us. So you can relax. It's not about you. You just have to be faithful to fill up, fill up, fill up, fill up, fill up. Now there are other places in the scriptures about these gifts, Romans 12, verses 3 and 8. Um, he talks about that. But it's interesting in this, in this scripture, he says, um, I warn everyone not to think more highly of you or have an exaggerated opinion of your own importance. So I like that because it's not about us. It's about Holy Spirit and his work. And it's about kingdom work. We live in the time of the kingdom. Get my, my book on kingdom alignment. It, it explains and talks and talks about the language of the kingdom. You can get it on Amazon.com in the ebook or the real book. But the kingdom, we're in an age of the kingdom. And so kingdom thinking means that we serve and Holy Spirit serves through us for the purposes of the good of the kingdom and the residents in the kingdom. So just because you have... 25,000 accurate prophecies to your credit <laughs> doesn't mean anything as far as you're concerned. It means that you're a vessel that allows Holy Spirit to move unhindered through you. It's not about us, so we can't take credit for anything. This is all to the glory of God. It says, in fact, it says here in verse 3, rate your ability according to the degree of faith that you have. So... <laughs> The amount of your ability, we prophesy by faith, the scripture says. So the amount of, of the ability to prophesy is according to your faith. So he goes on through this whole passage and he basically says, if you have it, use it. So you and I, we have it, we use it. We accept which one we have. We don't envy what other people have. We accept because it's not we that have it. But what we, we are a pipe and we let the living waters of life flow through us according to what the Lord needs. It's not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. It's not us who speak, but according to the outrayings of either Christ the divine or Holy Spirit and his power. So that means that you and I, in, in actually this is also in 1 Corinthians 12, but also if you go to 27 through 31, we're not going to read that whole thing, but it basically says that we're a team. So we're all a part of a body, and each part has their part, and we're a team. And so this teamwork, this, this, this ability to work together means I don't value myself more highly than you. Actually, it's probably more I've learned to prefer one another, to submit to one another, to bring out the gifts in one another. And then in verse 31, and yet, even though the gifts are important, the higher, more excellent way is love. So you and I look at 2 Corinthians 4.16. We consider and look not to the things which are seen, but to things which are unseen. For the things which are seen are temporal and brief and fleeting. And that's what we say about the situation in the world today. It's brief and fleeting. But the things which are invisible, are unseen, are deathless and eternal. Deathless. 
bliss. You and I need to speak life. You and I need to speak hope because that's what God does. He speaks life. He speaks hope. He does not prophesy doom and gloom. I just heard a prophet I highly respect just the other day. He said, I am not a doom and gloom prophet, and I never will be. He's an internationally known prophet, and I so respect that. He's been doing this for 35 years, and I trust the flow of God through him because of that. God is life, and he speaks life. Jesus is the life. The kingdom of God is life. So our words reflect that. We speak life. We will see, Holy Spirit, if you talk about um, uh, New Testament prophecy, the scripture says it's for comfort, edification, and encouragement. So we comfort. Holy Spirit's the comforter. He comforts. So when we speak by the unction of the Holy Spirit, it's going to be comforting. He encourages. He puts courage in. We need to put courage in. Holy Spirit puts courage in. We don't speak doom and gloom and negative and bad, 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 bad. In, in Espanol, malo, 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 malo. No, no, no. We don't speak bad. We speak life. We speak hope. We give hope. Jesus is our living hope. Holy Spirit guides us into the, to the truth of Jesus Christ, that He is our hope. So I speak hope to you today. I say there is hope for your situation. It doesn't matter what is happening in your home. It doesn't matter what's happening in your family. There is hope for you. There is hope. Reach out from the depths of your innermost being. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's Holy Spirit. Out of your belly, the river of life, just reach in there. We break the power of depression, oppression, hopelessness. We break it in the name of Jesus. By His power, by His blood, we break it. And we say, child of God, reach for life. Reach for Holy Spirit. Reach for the depths of Jesus Christ. Grab and hold on to that hope that endures even in Hebrews it says even to behind the veil it's the hope that never fails and never lasts beyond the current it's a hope that lasts forever reach for it lean on it this is the time to lean on the everlasting arms we lean on you great Jehovah God bless you guys. Beautiful one. Beautiful.